Hey, it is Tiki Technical Tuesday. Look at this. We have cast 200 volcanic vapor mugs and it is time for us to figure out how we're gonna glaze them. So as you recall in our last, well, I guess it was two episodes ago, three, I don't know. The Tiki Technical Tuesday where we did glaze testing, uh, we ended up here with a green and a nice orange red and we had a sparkle glaze. Look at the sparkles, Look at, especially in the sun, sparkle. And we had a flat black. I ended up deciding that I love the sparkle and I love the greens and I love the reds, but there were problems. Our little glaze test turned out great. Fantastic gradients, great surface, but the actual pieces turned out terrible. Craters, pits, and it wasn't just the greens, it happened in the reds too. Here, beautiful. And then on the actual piece, craters, pits, yucky. So there are lots and lots of variables that can affect a firing and cause pinholes like we have on this glaze test. So I went through and did another one trying to eliminate all those things. I cleaned my bisqueware. I was extremely careful in the application. I um, did very light coats, lots of stuff to try to alleviate it. And we ended up with this one. Unfortunately, it had the exact same issues and it wasn't just in the green. We redid the red and I actually tried like a red and a yellow, which not only did it look gross, it also had pinholes in it. So what do we do? Well, I could try to troubleshoot this a little more, but I am super hesitant to spray 200 plus mugs with something that may or may not work. So we're going to switch from a glaze to an underglaze. So glaze versus underglaze. What's the difference? Now, let me preface this by saying I am a self-taught ceramicist and I did not go to school for any of this. So I may be slightly off and I'm not going to get very technical, but I will tell you this much that I do know after looking at books in the internet is glazes contain a lot of silica. Think of them as like powdered glass uh, with a lot of um, usually metallic elements, uh, different things in there that will, when you fire them, they go through a chemical reaction. They flow like glass over the ceramic piece and they will interact with the ceramic piece. For example, here, this is a glazed piece and you can see the glaze flows like water, like basically molten glass, filling all of the little crevices and it will interact with the surface. Now, under glaze is a different thing. Um, it is basically ceramic slip, which is just clay, with a uh, pigment in it that will stay color stable throughout firing. So in other words, you spray this or bank this onto your piece, it doesn't move, it doesn't change color, it just stays exactly the way it is. Um, downsides of this stuff is it has the same surface as clay. So when you fire it, it will look very rough. And sometimes you'll see tiki mugs that are kind of, people call it like a chalky feeling. That's under glaze. It doesn't have a glass element in it, no silica in it. So it doesn't flux over. It doesn't make that nice, smooth, non-porous surface. Um, now, that being said, there are tricks with it. Sometimes when you fire it, um, it will look great at a low fire temperature, but not at high fire where I fire. I fire things very hot. Let me show you some examples. Here we've got a light blue and a light green underglaze, basically both containers of colored slip. Now I sprayed these onto a test piece and fired it to cone six and look what happened. The green turned to like an icky dirt color and the blue really darkened. So with this color shifting in mind, we've been doing test after test after test after test. So that brings us here. As you can see, it has been glaze testing mania. Today is Friday and I'm hoping that by Tuesday when this video is released, we will have a final working glaze. Now, what are we going to do today? We are going to test some final color choices that I think will work on a tiny little piece like one of these little glaze tester guys. And we are going to test what I think is a working hero glaze. This one I really like. We're gonna do it one more time, make sure it comes out right. And then this will definitely be locked in. A nice orange to yellow with a glitter, looking good. And I hope to get a few other color tests finalized on the little guys before I burn up another one of these guys. Plus you can see we did some with white tops. I think they kind of look cool, but in the end, I think that glitter is the winner. Anyway, we've only got a couple days and we know that firings takes a long time. So let's get to it. For test number one, we want to match the glaze colors on the right and underglazes. So I'm going to apply a chartreuse and a teal underglaze to the bisqued piece here on the left. 
it's spray time and that means taking out my trusty spray gun now we're going to be going through these steps again and again and again every single time we change color it involves pouring underglaze into the little container here closing that up putting it onto the gun and then heading into the spray booth to actually apply it to the piece this is probably the most time consuming part of doing glaze tests why is this the most time consuming thing well these spray guns are designed to spray a lot of things, not little things. So each time you change colors, you've got to take the gun apart. You've got to clean it all out. You've got to put all of your precious extra underglaze back into the container before you switch colors. Then we will switch colors, put the teal in, and head back to the booth. It's not a big problem when you're spraying 20 or 30 at a time, but changing the colors and just spraying one item at a time is really, really time consuming. I'm going to take care when I apply the teal to do it from just the top down as if there's a, a teal light bulb shining down on the top of this piece. Tricky. Oh. Whew, so there you have it. Uh, we've got the nice chartreuse to the nice teal blue. And as you can see, it's a little tricky when the water evaporates after I you know hit it with the heat gun it gets this chalky appearance and the color is not very true. The color looks much more vibrant when it's wet or when it has a clear glaze over the top of it, which we'll be doing later. Anyway, this guy is ready to go into the kiln for a second bisque firing. Uh, but before we do that, we have got to hit one of the full-size Vapors mugs um, to test a nice orange. That'll be the, the final, like, Final, final test to make sure that it's good of uh, the orange to yellow with the glitter glaze. So if you remember from our first adventure of doing test glazes on the volcanic vapors, masking them was a big pain in the bottom. So in order to make things easier, I thought I would try one of these little devices that painters use for masking off window trim and stuff like that. And it's basically a paper roll that attaches to a tape roll. Ta-da! So the hopes is this will make masking the tops and bottoms of the mugs a lot faster. So and what I've done is I've gone through here and I am measuring the diameter of tape needed to cover both the top and the bottom. And once I have that number figured out, I uh, wrote it down on a piece of paper and I'm going to go ahead and stick that here to my workbench so that I can quickly cut masking to do all of the mugs. I'm really excited about using this paper instead of using plastic for the masking because it's kind of absorbent and when I spray the glaze on it doesn't bead up or drip everywhere. It's, it's, a, it's a nice shield. And also, it is really fast. This is way faster than it went last time. Time to head back to the spray booth and by now you know the drill of prepping your colors, spraying them on, cleaning the gun, getting more colors, spraying them on. Uh, the only addition is this time we've got to remove the masking when we're done. Aha! So here we are. We've got our two, hopefully, final tests ready to go. I'm going to put them into the kiln and do a bisque firing. Why am I doing another bisque firing? Because I want to set these underglazes. I want to kind of think of it like paint. By putting it into the kiln, I make sure it's dry before I apply the final surface coat, which will be a nice satin glaze. And it gives it, it's a satin clear, and it will alleviate that chalky feeling. But if I applied that right now and did a glaze firing, there's a risk that it would lift away. I don't want it to lift this unset underglaze. So that being said, let's stick these in the kiln. All righty, the firing is finished. The underglaze is now permanent. It won't wipe off. I can't wash it off with water. It is basically bisqued clay because as I said earlier, underglaze is made of slip. So now it is time to move on to the next stage and it's all about texture. Remember I talked about the, the chalky feeling that sometimes mugs have? So these feel very chalky. It's a, it's a rough surface. Now 
I know some people don't like that chalky texture. I don't mind it. I mean, I see it as a texture. If I am doing a mug where it's supposed to be wood or I'm trying to replicate rope, sometimes I like that feel because it feels natural. It's the way that I feel that that material should feel. Now, in this case, since this is kind of an amorphous blob, I wanted to have a satin smooth texture, not a gloss texture. I'm going kind of for a satin. So I'm going to cover these now with a satin glaze. And then we also have to put the sparkle on the top and bottom. Look what's back. It's the paper and tape. Only this time we are masking off the center of the mug because we're going to be painting the tops and the bottoms. Spraying glaze is just like spraying under glaze, the exact same steps. Got to get the gun, we got to clean the gun, we pour in our glaze, and we hit the booth. Okay, the sparkle glaze is looking great, and our reward for doing such a good job is more masking. That's right, we're masking it again. Now we're going to mask off that sparkle glaze top and bottom so that we can spray a clear satin glaze over the center. Okay, so we've got a coat of glaze on this piece, and I also slapped a coat of glaze onto our little uh, teal and chartreuse tester. Now you notice they're all white, and that's because they're covered with glaze. Remember, glaze, unlike underglaze, is mostly silica. It's like powdered glass. So even though these look white, it's going to fire clear, and there's an additive in that silica that will give it a satin finish instead of a high gloss finish. Hopefully. You, you never know. We'll see how it turns out in the end. Anyway, I'm going to peel the masking off of this and sponge the bottoms off on this guy so that he won't, you know, we don't want glaze. There's a little bit of glaze overspray on the bottom where you don't want him to fuse to the bottom of the kiln. So I'm going to do those two things and then throw these into the kiln for a glaze firing. It's a very high temperature firing and we will all just cross our fingers and hope that they come out. Now I realize this has been a, a very, very technical Tiki Technical Tuesday. I hope it's not too technical. If you're just a mug collector and you're not into ceramics, maybe it has made you appreciate more. Maybe it's made you more of a connoisseur of the, the mugs that you own and collect. Um, and if you're a ceramics person, this probably wasn't even close to technical enough. Who knows? So with this glaze firing, we're really checking the color accuracy on this guy. We've got him coated with underglaze. The underglazes look fantastic, but in this high temperature glaze firing, those colors may shift. I don't think they will, but it could happen. Secondly, we want to see how those underglazes will interact with the clear overglaze that we have on top. That's that guy. And on this one, we hope it just comes out fabulous. Please. All righty, it is Sunday and the kiln is mostly cool. Um, I have had a nice bike ride this morning. I have eaten a lot of donuts and had many, many cups of tea. So I think I am physically and emotionally ready to open this thing up. Now, of course, this is the first time I'm seeing these and glaze tests are always a mystery. So let's go on this journey together of what is inside of this kiln. Oh, wait, actually, you know what? It did 160 degrees, so I'm going to get some gloves. Oh, man. Here we go.
First up, super happy. Super happy. So first up, we've got the chartreuse tests. This is the one that we were hoping to match, and here is the one that I just took out of the kiln. It's not a perfect match, but it is exceptionally close. I'm still happy with the green and the teal. Um, yeah, I think this will look super cool on the actual mug, and I can't wait to do some of these up. So we're definitely gonna be doing some in the orange and yellow and in this cool color. Next, we have got the big, big finale piece. Here it is, I'm getting it in a sunbeam for maximum glitter effect. So happy with this. It's the official first actual production glazed finished volcanic vapors. In fact, this is number 86 of 250. So maybe, maybe this one will be yours. Who knows? Anyway, that wraps it up for this Tiki Technical Tuesday. It'll be the last one on glazing. Well, I guess on test glazing. We are going to be hopping on to glazing the 200 castings that we have sitting on the shelves over there. That's what we're going to be doing for the next weeks, many weeks. It's going to be a while to get all these done. Anyway, uh, I hope to have official final photos soon of this mug as well as we're going to do one in the new green color and maybe a third color as well. I think I like some of those other tests we've done. Anyway, lots for us to figure out such as pricing, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. But the, the information will be coming soon. Thanks a lot for tagging along on this glaze adventure. They are always exciting. And I will see you next week-ish.